Hey cats, it's Ed, Shoebox Bud here. Today I'm discussing whether the midsole drop of a running shoe really makes any difference. Does it really matter? Let's discuss. Welcome to the channel and thanks for dropping by, it's always appreciated. Today I'm asking the question, does the heel to toe drop of a running shoe midsole really make any difference? Just in case you don't know what on earth I'm talking about, the drop is the difference between the heel stack and the forefoot stack in the midsole of a shoe. Some shoes have a very aggressive high drop, others are zero actually, like the ultra shoes that you can get. Some people suggest if you have a zero drop, then it's like easier to run on your mid to forefoot. Other people seem to like racing in much higher drop shoes. Some people just can't get on with these low drop shoes at all and they just give them injuries and create all sorts of uh, uncomfortable sensations. Now, the reason I asked this question, it's sort of come into my mind recently, is that I've seen loads of strange measurements about the midsole stack heights in different running shoes. The figures just don't seem to add up. Some people are measuring them in strange ways. And also there's this disclaimer on New Balance's website that seems to be on pretty much every one of their running shoes. I've always been a bit mystified by it. It says due to variances created during development and manufacturing processes, all references to 10 mil or whatever the drop of the shoe are, are approximate so what they're saying is there that you could get a shoe that's apparently got a 10 mil drop but it might not be exactly 10 mil it might be a little bit below that let's not forget we're dealing in millimeters here and we've seen that production tolerances are actually quite loose really with running shoes they can be very different from model to model from batch to batch now if we're looking at that new balance uh, fuel cell rc elite 2 some websites suggest that she has an eight millimeter drop yet if we go over to new balance's website you can clearly see here it says it's got a 10 mil drop there's loads of review websites out there that do suggest it has an eight mil drop i think i might have even suggested it had an eight mil drop i was only going on the information that i found on new balance's website but that seems to have changed or have they changed the shoe i don't know but yeah there we go maybe those websites are correct actually and they measured the shoe and it does come in at an eight mil drop so are we saying that there could be a difference of about two millimeters you know a variance in the heel stack there interesting i'd also be interested to know how a lot of websites and even the manufacturers themselves are actually measuring the forefoot stack it's really difficult to actually know what the forefoot stack is in a lot of running shoes you know you can't see actually how high it is don't forget they're including the insole in this as well i know for race purposes they measure it with a laser don't they sounds very futuristic but without cutting the shoe in half and actually measuring it exactly how do they know i know they use a sample size don't they it's like eight and a half or something like that which is the one it has to conform to it all seems a bit strange to me if you've just got a slightly higher size shoe then you can have it higher than that i don't know it's like a spreadsheet that's got all of the things on. As long as you've got one of those shoes that's okay on the spreadsheet, you're good to go. Surely though, slicing a shoe in half with some sort of cutting apparatus is gonna affect the materials a little bit, isn't it? Are we expecting them to sort of trim straight through and maybe compress a little? I don't know. I'm just speculating here, you know, don't get your knickers in a twist. Running Warehouse here suggests a shoe with over a seven mil drop is best for people who hit heel first or often wear their shoes out with an elevated heel. And a lower drop is best for runners who land mid to forefoot. Interesting. So does that suggest a lot of these very high stacked, highly cushioned shoes with aggressive drops are meant for runners who heel strike, like the Next Percent or the Alpha Fly or the RC Elite 2 or loads of the others? Let's just consider this for a second. So you've got the Alpha Fly, right? That's practically tuned for the exact specifications of the master Kip, the goat of marathon running, Elliot Kipchoge. That shoe's got a lower drop, hasn't it? A four millimeter drop from heel to toe. And that suggests that he hits mid to forefoot, which we know he's like a midfoot striker, isn't he? He lands on that midfoot with metronomic levels of consistency that we can only dream of. Does that explain why many people that like the next percent couldn't get on with the Alpha Fly? There's a more generous drop on the next percent, isn't there? Of eight millimeters i know good buddy kev burton he just couldn't get on with the alpha fly whatsoever it was next percent all the way for him i even call him kev next percent burton again there's some odd numbers here with the measurement of these shoes suggesting that the next percent's actually got a slightly higher stack not sure about all of this i'll tell you this for nothing guys my pairs of the next percent are nowhere near as high in the heel as the alpha fly 
A lot of people suggest the next percent's 40 millimeters in the heel and 32 in the forefoot. Again, they're very close, but the next percent certainly feels the more aggressive shoe. In fact, the Alpha Fly to me almost feels like the drop's even lower than four millimeters. I mean, clearly the shoe wants you to land on the mid to forefoot so you can engage those air zoom pods in the front. There's more energy return from those. They're more resilient, apparently, than the Zoom X material itself. Nike told us that in some of their launch materials. Hoka are one brand that tends to stick with a four to five millimeter drop in nearly every shoe. There's a couple of exceptions, but pretty much every single one's between four to five. The Rincon, the Clifton and the Rocket X, for example, all have the same heel to toe drop without exception. While Saucony in their more recent models like the Endorphin Speed and Pro tend to stick with an eight millimeter drop. Adidas are more aggressive though with 10 to eight millimeter drops in almost all of their 2021, 2022 shoes. Aside from the Takumi Sen, that's pretty much the odd one out there. Everything else has got quite an aggressive drop. Even the Ultra Boost is actually quite an aggressive drop from heel to toe. It might not look it, but it is. It's clear that New Balance actually have the most varied approach to that heel to toe drop in their shoes at the moment. You can see anything from about a 10 mil drop in the RC Elite version two, apparently by their website. And then in the Fresh Foam More 4, you've only got a four millimeter drop. I think that's to shoehorn in as much foam underfoot as possible. So this leads me to ask the question, if the foam is more springy, it's more squashy and compressive and soft, does the drop of the shoe actually lose a bit of significance? If you stand around in one of those shoes, you can kind of feel your heel sinking into the midsole. It's a little bit like the quicksand scene in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. For example, the Prime X is a 56 millimeter beast for me in the heel, which if I use the measurements that are on add Das's website about the forefoot stack that should equate to a 47.5 millimeter forefoot stack that's insane does it feel like that to me though not really i suppose i think once running in that shoe the stack just loses its importance it's just such a soft and smooth shoe i can safely say that that shoe leaves all areas of my legs feeling less fatigued over time certainly than the lower drop alpha fly that seems very aggressive compared to the prime x is that down to the drop of the shoe and the utilization of the foam or the fact that the prime x hasn't got those quite aggressive and rigid air pods in the front thinking further into this is there any correlation between the shoes that work very well for me at the moment in training and the ones that don't some shoes that do work for me right now we've got the adios pro 2 which apparently is a 10 mil drop but then the pro original was only an 8.5 drop not sure about that. The Nova Blast 2 is a winner at the moment. That's an 8 mil drop. The RC Elite has always been a favourite of mine, that version 1, and that's a 10 mil drop. The Alpha Fly works, although it's a more aggressive shoe for me. It's a 4 mm drop. And then the Prime X is one that I love taking out right now. It's a 10 mil drop. There are a few shoes over recent times that just haven't worked for me that well at all. I haven't completely given up on the Takumi Sen 8 right now. That shoe has a 6 mil drop. It's getting better and better the more I use it. That Mac 4 from Hoka has a 5 mil drop. Something or nothing, that shoe for me. And the Zoom Fly 4, don't want to think about that one too much. That has an 8 mil drop. So have I just reviewed more higher drop shoes and that's probably why I've come out with a list of higher drop ones that I like? Or do I just prefer a higher stack? There are certainly shoes that I'm enjoying at the moment, like the Street Fly, for example, that have got a lower drop. How about you guys? Let me know which shoes work for you. Is there some correlation between the drop of the shoe or the certain high drop shoes work very well and certain low drop shoes work well for you? Let us know down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you. I've been particularly enjoying an album from High Contrast from back in 2017. This one's called Night Gallery and it's got some fantastic high energy tunes on it. Really like my drum and bass, nice and clean and precise. Some nice sort of pickups to the melodies, nothing too sort of sour or dark. Especially for running, you want something that's going to give you that extra little edge, a little boost. Something that's going to raise the adrenaline level, but also give you that euphoric feeling. I love the tracks Remind Me. That's a fantastic one. Really has an almost like a Tame Impala type vibe about it. Questions and Don't You Go Out of My Mind are also killers too. I love the track Love on 45. It is wonderful. Kind of sounds a little bit like an 80s game show mixed with drum and bass. Listen to it, you'll see what I mean. The track Tobacco Road has got some awesome guitar parts on too. It's just those drums so punchy, really in your face. Definitely want to check out and put on your running playlist. This one's called Night Gallery by High Contrast. 
Okay, it's time for me to mosey off into the sunset. Thanks for tuning in, it's always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and also click the bell below for notifications when I launch those new videos for you. You can also help the channel out by giving this video a thumbs up like, but also sharing it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.